Writing should never be safe. It's not meant to be. It doesn't have to be perfect cookie cutter. It's meant to break the rules, to elicit emotions, to change someone else's viewpoint, to open their eyes, to reach out through that page as a writer and grab the attention in the heart of your reader. It can never be anything less. Or you risk something vital being lost in the translation that happens between the fir person who first dreamed up the writing, then translated it from what they saw in their head onto paper or computer, and the interpretation of the reader when they read it. <clears throat> and that's, of course, not taking into account those of us who have to go through editing, publishing, republishing before the work gets out to whomever you choose to share it with. It all begins with a thought, an idea, a flash in the dark that catches the writer's attention and holds it for a second. That second is all it takes to spark an idea in our minds. And suddenly worlds are born, heroes are born, grow up, go to battle, marry, have children, and die old men and women. And it all happens in the flash of a second. Each and every story you write shines a spotlight on the characters that inhabit your mental stage, whether they're human, cyborg, robot, hybrids, aliens, animals, rocks with wings that fart rainbow-colored sparkles. The point is, for a moment, you're shining a spotlight on something, on someone. When you're writing a story, a poem, a song, when you're making a painting, a sculpture, when you're taking a photograph, you found something that caught your attention long enough for you to want to draw someone else's attention to it so that you can turn around and share in that moment and that subject matter with someone else in turn. So you pour your heart and soul into your craft, putting in time and effort and work, sweating, bleeding, creating, and all the while feeling this underlying need to share your work with others. For a moment when it's seen, read, viewed, listened to, you're sharing that moment in time with another human being and whether they're standing in the room with you and you can see the expression on their face or whether they're half a world away seeing your work on the television, hearing it on the radio, seeing it on the computer or in a magazine or in a book, they're sharing that moment with you. And it all began with that spark of inspiration that ignited a spark of creation in your brain. It began in excitement and epiphany and panic as you ran headlong to find paper, to find drawing tools, a camera, your laptop, whatever tools you use to create whatever form of expression you use to express how you feel. It began with feeling. And no matter how many filters and layers and edits it goes through, it should never become anything less. That was a drabble that I posted on my blog yesterday, maybe the day before, that I wanted to share with you guys because I'm starting to get feedback on my writing now. And I've always been adamant that I write from a place of feeling. You know, I'm a human being. I write based on my emotions and my thoughts and my viewpoints and how I see the world. And it colors everything I do, everything I create, like it should. Any form of art, any form of expression is slanted by who does it. You know, you could take one writing prompt, you know, you could take one idea and tell people, hey, sit down and write a story on this subject matter, and then you'll have 50 different people writing stories, and you'll have 50 different viewpoints, you know, and expression should be expression, art should be expression, and it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, my writing's not perfect. I know it's not. I know there's people out there better than me that do it differently than I do, that look at it differently than I do. And that's the point. How boring would it be to sit down and write books where they were all written the same way, they were all the same viewpoint by the same people or held to the same ideals, and you always knew what to expect every time you opened that book? You know, it would take the fun out of it. You know, that's part of what makes paintings beautiful. I love to take oil paintings and get right up next to them so you can see where the brush strokes were and little mistakes that the artists made, you know, and just... 
Art is expression. It should express what you were feeling at the time you wrote it, you know, and they should be able to pick it up and look at it and feel what you were feeling when you did it. You know, that's... My grammar's not always perfect. I try to make it as close as I can, but when you're in it, you should be in it. And when they read it, they should be able to fall in it like you were in it. You know, and if it's anything less, if your work does anything less than swallow people whole, then really what's the point? You know, I've always pushed myself not to compare my work with anyone else, but I've always pushed myself to get better every year, to take a story I wrote five years ago and sit down with it now five years later and try to improve on it to where if people didn't get goosebumps where they were supposed to, I push to where they get goosebumps. Or if I can make it to where people go, God, I'm not reading it, I can see it, then it's getting there. It's not perfect, but it's close. I want it to be that real to people. I want my characters to mean something, you know? It's not just a hobby for me. If I actually do end up with a career based off it, it would never be just a career for me. It's been a passion of mine for so long, and I never want people who look at my work to pick it up and think that it's anything less. Because it does matter so much. And I gotta go, because my oldest stepson just walked through the door and the dogs are gonna go nuts. But that was my drabble. Writing should never be safe. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Sorry about the dogs. This has been A.B. Songbird. Night, guys.